What do pigs grunt about? Scientists have trained artificial intelligence to recognize their emotions. An international team of scientists has translated pig grunts into the emotions they seem to express. Thousands of recordings collected throughout the pigs' lives, from birth to death, helped. The researchers also used artificial intelligence to infer how the pigs were feeling based on grunts. Scientists have developed a special algorithm that decodes the grunts and squeaks of pigs into what scientists believe are the emotions they express in many different conditions and stages of life. The authors of the study describe how, using 7,414 recordings from 411 pigs, they trained an artificial intelligence system to determine which grunts squeaks and groans express happy feelings and which negative emotions. The researchers suggest that such a system could automatically monitor the welfare of farm animals. The research, conducted by scientists from the University of Copenhagen, the Federal University of Technology in Zurich and the French National Research Institute for Agriculture, Food and the Environment, INRAE has been published in scientific reports. To read the emotions of pigs from the sounds they make, scientists used artificial intelligence algorithms. The algorithms were trained on over 7,000 recordings that were collected in a wide range of situations faced by farm pigs, both positive and negative, from birth to death. After such training, the artificial intelligence was able to recognize whether a given pig is experiencing positive emotions, whether it is happy or excited, or whether it has negative feelings, is scared or stressed. With this study, we show that animal sounds provide great insight into their emotions. We also prove that algorithms can be used to decode and understand pig emotions which is an important step towards improving the welfare of farm animals. Elodie Briefer from the Department of Biology, University of Copenhagen. The researchers recorded pig noises in a variety of scenarios, both positive and negative. Examples of positive situations included feeding piglets by their mother or reuniting piglets from the same litter after a short separation. Emotionally negative situations include separation, fights between piglets, castration or slaughter. In the experimental pig styes, the researchers also created different trial scenarios for the pigs, designed to elicit more varied emotions. Somewhere between negative and positive. These scenarios included a special place with toys or food and a second, similar, but without any incentives. Scientists placed their new, unknown objects for pigs to interact with. The noises, behaviors and even the heart rate of the pigs were monitored and recorded whenever possible. In this way, the researchers collected 7,414 recordings. By analyzing them, the researchers tried to see if there was any pattern in the sounds that could betray emotions. They found that high-frequency noises, squeaks and squeaks, were most often associated with negative situations. Low-frequency calls, similar to barks and grunts, occurred in both positive and negative emotions. All calls, both low and high, lasted less when the pigs were happy. While negative emotions tended to be associated with noises of variable volume. Common signs of negative emotions in pigs are that they stand still, make a lot of noise, and try to escape. While positive signs are sniffing, exploring their surroundings, and pricking up their ears. The situations between the extremes were especially interesting. Through more careful analysis of the sound files, the researchers uncovered another pattern that revealed in even more detail what the pigs were experiencing in certain situations. There are clear differences in pig calls when we look at positive and negative situations. 
In positive situations, the calls are much shorter, with little variation in amplitude. Grunting, to be more precise, starts high and gradually decreases. Thanks to training, the algorithm can recognize these sounds, and we can classify them as the right emotions with 92% of the time. Accuracy, explains Briefer. The study of animal emotions is a relatively new field that has emerged in the last 20 years. It is now widely accepted that the mental health of farm animals is important to their overall welfare. Nevertheless, animal welfare today is primarily focused on physical health. Currently, there are several systems that can automatically monitor the physical health of animals. Analogous animal mental health monitoring systems have yet to be developed. The researchers involved in the study hope that their algorithm could pave the way for a new platform for pig farmers that would allow them to observe the mental well-being of their animals. We trained an algorithm to decode pig grunts. Now we need someone who would like to turn the algorithm into an application that farmers could use to improve the welfare of their animals says Briefer and adds that with enough data to train the algorithm, this method can also be used to better understand the emotions of other mammals. The researchers cloned the mice using freeze-dried skin cells. Japanese scientists have successfully cloned mice using freeze-dried skin cells. These studies show that freeze-drying may one day help protect species and overcome the challenges of current methods of storing genetic material in biobanks. Lyophilization is a method of freeze-drying frozen materials using reduced pressure. Water is removed from the frozen product by ice sublimation, i.e. by turning the ice directly into the gaseous state, bypassing the liquid state. As a result of this process, the product loses a significant part of its weight and moisture is reduced to almost zero. This technique inhibits the growth of microorganisms and is one of the better processes for preserving food products. Now it has been used to store genetic information and for cloning. Researchers and international organizations have been warning for years that extinctions are accelerating around the world. Climate change could lead to the extinction of up to a million species known to us today. For this reason, centers have been established in many countries where samples of endangered plants and animals are stored in order to enable their cloning in the future. These samples are typically preserved using liquid nitrogen or stored at very low temperatures. It is very expensive, and the collected material can be destroyed as a result of, for example, power outages. New research on the use of freeze-drying to store genetic material has been published in Nature Communications. Researchers at Japan's Yamanashi University wanted to see if they could solve these problems by freeze-drying the cells and then trying to make clones of them. The researchers experimented with two types of mouse cells and found that although freeze-drying killed them and caused significant DNA damage, they could still be used to produce cloned blastocysts, a bundle of cells that develops into an embryo. 75 mice were successfully cloned in this way. One of the mice survived a year and nine months. And the team successfully mated female and male cloned mice with naturally born mates, resulting in healthy young rodents. However, the cloned mice produced fewer offspring than would be expected from naturally born mice. Also, one of the male cell lines produced only female mouse clones. Correcting these errors should not be difficult, believes Professor Terahiko Wakayama of Yamanashi University. We believe that in the future we will be able to eliminate errors and increase the birth rate, among others by by improving drying methods, Wakayama said. There are some other drawbacks to the method. 
The success rate of cloning mice from cells stored in liquid nitrogen or at ultra-low temperatures is 2 to 5 percent. While the freeze-drying method gives a result of 0.02 percent. But Wakayama says the technique is still in the early stages of testing. The most important thing is that the cloned mice were produced from freeze-dried somatic cells and that we have achieved a breakthrough in this field, says the scientist. Although the method is unlikely to completely replace cryopreservation, it represents a very important advance for scientists who work to develop biobanks and preserve biodiversity on our planet. The study stored freeze-dried cells at minus 30 degrees Celsius, but the team had previously shown that freeze-dried mouse sperm could survive at least a year at room temperature. The technique could ultimately allow genetic resources from around the world to be stored cheaply and safely, says Wakayama. Mouse embryos grown from skin stem cells. Israeli scientists have created mouse embryos exclusively from skin stem cells, without sperm or egg cells. The first synthetic mouse embryos, complete with a brain and a beating heart, developed thanks to an innovative bioreactor. The novel method may in the future enable the growth of tissues and organs for transplantation. It will also allow researchers to delve into developmental mechanisms and better understand the formation of birth defects. In a study published in the journal Cell, scientists at the Weizmann Institute of Science in Israel say they have found a way for mouse stem cells to self-assemble into embryo-like structures. The researcher's feat was hailed as a major step forward, although some experts said the result could not be fully considered embryos. Scientists have created mouse embryos using skin stem cells grown in a Petri dish. An innovative method of research on the development of embryos made it possible to create synthetic models of mouse embryos without the participation of sperm or egg cells. For the development of the embryos, the researchers used an innovative bioreactor that allowed the embryos to survive much longer than in previous studies. The simulated embryos developed anatomy that matched reality. The researchers admitted that the similarities could be seen at the cellular level. The right cells were formed at the right time. Team leader Jacob Hanna of the Weizmann Institute of Science admitted that the embryo is the best machine for making organs, and their new method aims to mimic what it does. He added that scientists intend to do the same with human stem cells next. The researchers built on their previous research where they created mouse embryos using a variety of stem cells including embryonic stem cells, which are derived from normal embryos and can form all body tissues. They mimic the blastocyst stage, a stage in embryo development consisting of a trophoblast and an embryonic node. The embryos used in the in vitro procedure are in the blastocyst stage. However, these simulated embryos ran into a wall. Their cells were beginning to specialize, but they didn't fuse into organs. One obstacle was keeping such embryos alive for more than a few days. Last year, Hanna and his colleagues developed a procedure that allowed him to grow standard mouse embryos outside the mother's body for a record 11 days. A typical mouse pregnancy lasts about 20 days. The key piece of equipment in the new procedure is the incubator, which is constantly rotating and does not allow embryos to attach to its walls. Inside the incubator, the researchers placed a special fluid with nutrients and growth factors to simulate how nutrients were delivered to the placenta. This setup allows the team to precisely control growth conditions, such as oxygen levels, the record of 11 days outside the mother's body was set with embryos derived from fertilized mouse eggs. To determine whether the same procedure would allow stem cells to develop into full-fledged embryos, 
they undertook a new experiment. They started by taking cells from the skin of mice and then, reprogramming, them back to their earliest stage, when they have their greatest potential. The stem cells were then placed in an incubator. The vast majority of cells have formed nothing. But about 0.5% of all cells present in the bioreactor, about 50 out of 10,000, began to self-assemble and then formed embryo-like structures. Moreover, after eight days, about a third of the mice's 20-day gestation period, they were very similar to 8.5-day-old natural embryos and had a beating heart, distinct head and tail outlines. Segments that become skeletal muscles, a developing brain and the spinal cord, and the beginnings of other organs. The researchers also measured gene activity in more than 40,000 germ cells, finding all the expected cell types in the right locations. These embryos have been described as 95% similar to normal mouse embryos in both the shape of internal structures and gene expression, indicating that they may be functional. For unknown reasons, the artificial embryos stopped on the eighth day of development. Scientists hope to overcome this barrier and further develop artificial embryos. Stem cell-derived embryos have an advantage over normal mouse embryos because the cells are available in greater numbers and scientists can manipulate them more easily. The challenge will be understanding how stem cells know what to do and how they organize themselves into organs. Our next challenge is to understand how stem cells know what to do how they combine into organs and find their way to their designated places in the embryo. And because our system, unlike the uterus, is transparent, it could be useful for modeling birth defects and implanting human embryos, Hannah emphasized. Doing the same with human stem cells could help avoid some of the ethical controversies surrounding human embryo research. This provides an ethical and technical alternative to using embryos, said Nicholas Rivron of the Institute of Molecular Biotechnology of the Austrian Academy of Sciences. The technique may also be useful for creating personalized organs for transplantation. Researchers hope that one day it will be possible to take even cells from a patient's liver, use them to create stem cells, grow a synthetic embryo with the desired organ, and then transplant it into the patient. This will eliminate the problems associated with matching the right organ donor. The cell will be taken from the patient, so it will be the exact same DNA. There will be no need to look for donors and there will be no problems with organ rejection, he added. However, not all scientists call the achievement described in cell embryos. They prefer to call them embryoids, a group of embryo-like cells. These are not embryos, said Laurent David, a French stem cell scientist. However, he added that this research is very promising and could allow for further experimentation to understand exactly how organs are formed. Hannah also noted that beyond organs, such embryos could also help identify new drug targets and potentially help find solutions to a range of problems, such as pregnancy loss, infertility, endometriosis and fetal malformations.